Little Children's Museum in Indianapolis. We've all been there. Seems like just yesterday I was there during Christmas time going down that little makeshift slide on the stairs with that rug and then like you go down past all the penguins through all the fake snow and then land at the bottom and your sibling crashes into the back of you. It's all nice. And I know all you guys are thinking like, why are you talking about the Children's Museum? We're high school students. We don't go to the Children's Museum. Well, actually, a uh, shocking statistic for you guys. 38% of all people who went to the Children's Museum last year were adults. And an adult ticket means you're over the age of 13. So there's kind of a little difference there. Um, they actually get 1.27 million visitors every year. So it's not just obviously for kids. Everybody wants to go. It's that much fun. So um, basically, anybody in Indianapolis has to be lying if they say they haven't been. So um, without further ado, today we will be showing you guys why the Children's Museum is fun for everyone. All right, I'm starting off with the fall activities. I'm talking about some of the specific activities for fall, like the special events and stuff. We start off on September 16th with Talk Like a Pirate Day. It's basically a day dedicated to talking like pirates. You can dress up, you don't have to, but it's fun to explain. And it's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then one of the most popular, according to customer service, Executive John Marquis is the Haunted House. Um, this year's theme was the Wicked Woods. And um, there's many different activities other than this during the Halloween season, but this is the main one. Um, they have lights on hours from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. if you're like a scary cat, little kid, you know, don't want to be in the dark. And then we have frightening hours where the lights are off from 3.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then I have a video right here that I'd like to show you guys. Way, and that means Halloween just around the corner. And one safe way for your kids to celebrate is the Haunted House at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. To talk more about this year's theme, joining us today are the head witches. Uh, Liz and Rebecca. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Thank you for having us. All right, so this is a little different this year, right? Yeah, absolutely. So each year at the Haunted House is different, but we're super excited about this year. Um, our theme is Wicked Wood, uh -huh. and we've really brought the outdoors inside the Children's Museum. Okay, um, and why is that different from years past? Um, well, we created an outdoor space. Right. It feels like you're outside. Okay. Um, so you're going to have be in woods, you're going to experience um, some things, water, wild animals, some insects, all fake, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely an outdoor adventure for the whole family. And so we have some video um, that we're looking at from, I think, previous years. Um, this year, oh, this is actually oh, this, 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 this year. year. Mm -hmm. this year. Um, so, we also have a, a, a part of this is also lights on, right, for the kiddos. Like, I have a three-year-old, he gets he gets scared pretty easily. Mm -hmm. There's uh, some time with that you have the lights on, right? Absolutely. So we have lights on, which are our friendly hours. Mm -hmm. So it's friendly music. There's no scaring. Um, it's more of a trick-or-treat experience for the children. They get a giveaway in each room. And then we have frightening hours, where it's darker, it's scary music, and you will get scared. Okay. So let's talk about times. This all starts the first weekend. It, Yeah, like I said, it's the first Saturday of October, when it starts. Um, yeah, Alright, the next activity is the Fast Facts Fiction Exhibit, and, um, or Fiction and Facts, right? And there's many different showings on many different days. There's normally, like, it goes, like, five or six times throughout, throughout the days, and there's, like, four times throughout the month of um, October. The hosts are Janelle Cannon, and she wrote the book Stella Luna, which is about a little bat right there. And then another host is the is Rob Miles, who's a bat expert. And it's basically you come by, find the real facts about bats, and they actually bring out live bats to show everybody. Um, one of my favorite activities, or one of the my favorite exhibits that they talked about is the Kid Tested, Kid Approved. And it's on October 13th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And basically, it's just kids come in and then they test out the products that they might put on the shelf or might not for the holiday season, for like Christmas. And it's basically kids playing with toys and picking out their Christmas presents. So I think that's pretty cool. So the parents don't get them what they don't want. Um, 
Um, there's also the friendly feast with witches. This is another um, kind of Halloween activity for kids who might be too scared to go to the um, haunted house. Um, and basically, there's a breakfast, 9 a.m. to 10.30, and then a lunch club game to 1.30. Uh, the breakfast are normally on Saturdays and lunches on Sundays. And then it just kind of gets you in the holiday spirit, hang out with friendly witches, not too scary. Eat some food. Paleopalooza, it's on October 14th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and it's basically a long day full of dinosaurs. There's hands-on activities and you get to meet some scientists or archaeologists. I mean, who doesn't want to say dinosaurs? There's not. And then another uh, dinosaur activity is International Archaeology Day, which is on October 21st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And basically, same as Paleopalooza, you go, and there's also a dinosaur exhibit that we're going to talk about later. So you just hang out there and look at dinosaurs. It's pretty cool. Um, there's the Gills Black Cat Dash. It's more like all ages, like a family event. It's oh, 5K, which is one mile. And um, it's October 28th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And you guys can dress up as witches, ghosts, whatever you want to dress up. And there's other, there's going to be other people who work there that are going to be hanging out in costumes too. And then there's Chemistry Day, November 4th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And they have hands-on activities, demonstrations, and displays. And I mean, who doesn't love chemistry? Get a B in photo and that's in my class, maybe. And then to get ready for the holiday season that's coming up on November 18th, 10:30 uh, a.m. to 3 p.m. I mean, 10:30 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 1:30 to 3 p.m. Uh, there's Ginger Red House Museum. I mean, get ready early. It's fun. Um, holiday spirit. Basically, when Halloween's over, it's Christmas. Um, whether it's shopping like a pirate or getting ready for Christmas, all is fun packed at the Children's Museum. Now I'm gonna send it over to Sierra to talk about winter. So after the fall is over, we have winter activities at the Trippy Museum that a lot of people tend to love. And I have a video just to give you a preview of that time of the year. <laughs> Academy. Um, they bring in guest teachers from the academy 
and they do fun musical activities that allow young kids to discover just like the basics of music, such as pitch, rhythm, and tempo. You also get to hear a live performance, and usually their performances include instruments such as like the violin, cello, or the harp. And after that, you get to try playing a child-sized violin or cello. Another activity that they have is the breakdance workshop. You get to join 31 to SCN, which I think that's pronounced 31 to 7, Street Dance Academy, for a workshop that explores the art called breaking, aka breakdance. This is a high energy, dynamic, and most importantly, very fun workshop. And you get to learn through clapping and then a well-paced instruction that shows you how to do the cool moves that they do. And then to end the year, they do a countdown to noon. And of course it's at noon because we don't want kids out at midnight. So they also do this at 1 p.m. for if you can't make it to the new one. And during this, you get to hear music from the Grammy-nominated Zach Morgan before each countdown that they do. And you also get to receive festival favors, and, but you want to get there early because they do run out. And this is a great way to celebrate at like a reasonable time, as I said, but it's also a great way to tire them out before the night so then they'll actually go to bed at a good time. And as you can see, there are many things for everyone to do during this holiday season. Even though the museum special events during the fall and winter months are exciting, there are plenty of fun events that you can visit during the entire year. So, um, the first year-long exhibit is the circus exhibit starring you, where you are in control and the role of the circus. And the exhibit is one of the newest uh, ones at the Children's Museum. It was opened in February 18th of 2017. And when um, you enter in, you enter in through the big top. You walk in, that's the first thing you see. Um, there's three different stages in the circus in the circus uh, exhibit at the Children's Museum. Uh, through ring one, you'll get to ride in a clown car and look through the history of the children or of the circus and um, the, basically the history of how uh, it came up when it first started and uh, that type of information. Um, also cool artifacts they show you throughout the circus. And then um, after the history, practice your circus act with activities such as the, the lyra ring, which is um, a ring that circus uh, people use to like twirl around in and stuff and kids and other people can like mess around in those. They also have uh, a roller bowl up and that's like something that you try to balance on. It's really cool if you can do it. It's a great circus act they use a lot. And they also, also have virtual reality uh, tightrope. So you put on a VR headset and you, know, you like seem like you're walking on a tightrope and it's kind of cool and so on will throw you off balance. And, uh, and there's a bunch more activities that they have. And then finally, after practicing in ring three, you get to put on your own circus show, and you get help from professional like circus people. They let you put on costumes and help out, help you out with your act, and you can try to juggle on the stage too. It's pretty cool. It's perfect for letting loose and just being a clown. Aha, uh -huh. being a clown. <coughs> um, also, if you'd like the circuses, it's a as a kid, it's a perfect opportunity to uh, to bring your childhood back to life and enjoy the circus. The next um, exhibit is the American Pop exhibit. This is also one of their newer exhibits that they have. Um, the Pop exhibit exhibit um, is basically just all about culture of our society throughout the years with movies, TV shows, um, comic books, action figures. It's basically your whole childhood and it, it just warms, warms you back up to when you were a kid. And, um, you can see all the, the there's the Batman um, exhibit or part of the exhibit. And basically it's a whole thing about Batman and all of his like, cool stuff. Kids love this one, this is a very popular one with kids. Um, the American Pop Exhibit was added to the Children's Museum because they wanted people to see the changes in history throughout time period and how uh, lots of people have impacted the culture of society and how we still change it today. 
with the new stuff. Um, one of the activities they have is um, film and TV. You get to play classic movies and watch classic uh, TV shows that uh, you watch as a kid that you really like. And you can play with famous props from famous movies and TV shows. They have music, so you can see the evolution of music and um, just the different genres and from country to hip hop and all that stuff. They also have fashion and a history of fashion. They have a whole like thing of like 200 different cowboy boots from what they would wear with certain outfits and just how culture and style was was then and now. Um, you can look at old toys and games and bring back <coughs> your childhood memories. And you can um, read a wide variety of superhero comic books from Max Simon, the comic book collector who donated them to the Children's Museum. And you can, at the very end, you get to make your own comic book and, or not make your own comic book, you get to uh, pose in front of this picture with your family or friends and then like you can keep that picture in the background of comic books so you're like the center of the comic book. And this would be like a fun one if you're like a nerdy person or into, into comics and just like like all that stuff, cultural stuff, this would be a good one to, to go to. And another new exhibit that they have is the Beyond Spaceship Earth exhibit, which is all about NASA and the space and uh, stuff like that. Um, you get to learn about the history of space and how far we've come from it. They have it tells space exploration from NASA's Project Mercury, and uh, which sent the first two Americans into space, into space to the international, and they have everything from that to the International Space Station. There's three parts to this exhibit. The first one, the International Space Station exhibit. You get to see how astronauts do scientific scientific experiments in space. Um, you watch videos of astronauts and how they like work when they're in the spaceship out in space. And you get to um, wear space gear and try on different like the helmets and the clothes and stuff, which is pretty neat. Um, the next part is the Indiana Astronaut Wall of Fame. And basically what this is, is all the people from Indiana who were in like astronomy or were in the business with NASA and stuff, and talks about their impact that they had on the space, on the whole space industry and science and science industry. <coughs> and then the third part is the Space Object Theater. And this one I thought was pretty unique. Um, they get to show you um, the Liberty Bell 7, which is that thing right there. And um, the capsule behind is this is the capsule behind um, America's second man or er, manned space flight, and um, you get to see a light show, see a light show of the Liberty Bell, and um, yeah. So to summarize all this information, um, basically, if you're a person who's uh, wants to let loose and have a good time. Maybe the circus is more of your way just to joke around, have fun with family and friends. If you're more a person who wants to reminisce on their childhood, the uh, American Pop exhibit would be a great one for you. Or if you're more of a nerdy type of like science guy, definitely would visit the Beyond Spaceship Earth exhibit. And But if none of these interest you, there's plenty more year-round exhibits you can go to that Max will talk to you about. So, dino skier. So, when you're pulling up to the Children's Museum and you're driving around into the parking garage, what do you see? You look at the museum and you see the dinosaur walking around. You see the one looking, craning its neck inside the museum. And that's what the kids are mostly excited about, is to get right in to see the dinosaur. So, this is probably the most iconic part of the Children's Museum, the dinosaur section. Um, it gets more annual visits than any other exhibit and it has been part of the museum for 13 years. Um, it has appeared on New York Times, CNN, ABC, all these famous news networks. Um, so it's kind of like a famous part of the museum. Um, it features uh, life-size um, dinosaur um, bones that they actually dug up out of the ground somewhere here, uh, here in Minneapolis. Uh, like the T-Rex, the Triceratops, the Brontosaurus, they're all there and you can look at them and they're all standing up and there's storms around you. 
and then um, you can go back behind the scenes where they, uh, where you can see paleontologists working on uncovering the dinosaur bones. You can take a look at real dinosaur eggs that they found. And when you're done, you can go upstairs in a drawing studio and look out over the whole dinosphere to get some inspiration and draw what you see. <coughs> uh, Science Works. This is upstairs on the fourth floor. So this is full of interactive exhibits. Um, it contains a little river where you can build, build your own boat out of like straws and sticks and plates and stuff. And you can float it down the river through like all these twists and turns and see if it floats or not. It also contains a rock climbing wall where you can sign up and you can uh, sign your waivers and everything and climb up that rock wall. Um, and this is probably my favorite part of the museum right here, this um, rolling ball machine. So I'll show you a little video about that right now. You remember uh, that one time in the Goonies? You know the Goonies, oh, yeah, right? In the Goonies, uh, when Mikey opens up the cake for Chunk and it's all complicated. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite parts. Me too. Yeah, and you remember in uh, Back to the Future, right? Oh, right we get. <laughs> attraction for families. It has uh, things of all size, so if you're kind of like a big guy like me, you're not gonna have to worry about like crushing the little ponies. That's fine. And then uh, it's for adults, teens, kids, anyone who really wants to do carousel. Um, Treasures of the Earth. So this has um, things that like historical artifacts that have been found. Um, Anywhere, like all around the world, they have a, a tomb of a real life mummy that lived in Egypt. He was a king. His name is King Seti. Um, they have a shipwreck of uh, a ship that was owned by a famous captain named Captain Kidd, and that is preserved and it's like in all these little bubbles and it has all these like little electronic things hooked up to it and you can go through these screens and scroll through and see what the ship looked like before it wrecked and while it was sinking. Um, there's an archaeology lab where you can look at people who are um, currently working on different parts of the ship and the mummy, and they're trying to like analyze what the writing and the uh, numbers and symbols on all these things mean. And then probably the best part, my favorite part of this exhibit is, uh, is the terracotta warriors. And I'll show you another video on that of how they were found and brought to the The story of the terracotta warriors. 2,300 years ago, a boy named Jung was... A group of farmers were digging a well when they struck something hard in the ground. They saw parts of a statue that looked like a human. The farmers were startled to see a face staring back at them. They had heard legends from long ago of beings living underground. They didn't know at that time they had uncovered the first emperor's terracotta army. Since the discovery of the first life-size terracotta warrior, archaeologists have unearthed nearly 2,000 of them and they estimate there are about 8,000 total. They were buried in pits totaling five acres. That's nearly four football fields. And even more incredible, out of 8,000 warriors, no two were alike. Each had unique facial features and was painted in unique color schemes. They also... So there's a little, little bit of history lesson for you. Oops, back to that. Um, so yeah, they, ha they actually have one of these, uh, they have a real one that was actually found in China that they dug up and they shipped it off to the museum and you can go look at that. 
And while you're looking at that, you can do what this kid's doing right here. They have little uh, statues that you can build. Uh, they have an easy one, a medium one, and a really complex one if you're up for the challenge. So, um, yeah, if you're looking to learn a little bit more about history, you can visit Churches of the Earth. And uh, Abby, wrap it up. Alright, whether you're looking at dinosaurs, mummies, holiday specials, there's a good shop, of course. It's a great place to have a little mini vacay at the Children's Museum. Just ask the one and a quarter million people who go every year. Stop asking yourself why you'd go, ask why wouldn't you go. And don't let the name fool you. The Children's Museum is good for all ages.